there anything anyone wants to hear? <laughs> so what? So what? James come began the bike and we are back here at Kyman Reed and we're gonna go inside and look at an exhibition of early work by Jonathan Lasker well I think Jonathan has got a lot of fans and uh, unfortunately I couldn't get a copy of the uh, gallery guide, so I don't have the titles or dates. Brian Bielot. Hey. And I think that this work goes from about uh, maybe 76, 77 up to 1985. It's actually very interesting to see this because uh, Although I've been aware of, of Jonathan's work for a long time, and although we even showed it at the same gallery at Gabriel Breyer's back in the uh, mid 80s, I hadn't seen a lot of this early work. And even the early work that I did see was mostly a fairly small scale stuff. Kind of nice. There's kind of a uh, an odd quality about a lot of this. Uh, just has a kind of a figurative sense to it. Hey, Jonathan has always been a great colorist. What do you think of the work? Spectacular. Devastating. Are you a fan? Fruity, fantastic, funky, fun. So you kind of like it, right? It's pretty good stuff. I give it an A+. Plus. <laughs> Amazing. What do you like about it? Um, well, I love its funkiness. I love um, how playful it is. I love how expressive it is, but at the same time, it's very systematic. It's very contemplative. Though it's about gesture, he's kind of harnessing gesture and comparing gestures, so you feel like there's a lot of thought going on behind it. I've heard re being referred to as uh, pop abstraction. What do you think of that uh, as a kind of a slot to put it in? Well, I mean, I'm sure that's a kind of generic way to d discuss it, but I think that's missing some of the more important points in it. You know, I think there's a lot of simulacrums dancing around. Simulacrum. It. Yeah, I think there's that's a simulacrum. an even better word. But it's such a fantastic show. Thanks, Brian. Incredible. Thank you. Oh, oh, there's Ron Gorchov. I think he's going to be having a show here in a month or two. Oh, it's the blindfolded art critic here. Jonathan's <laughs> got a lot of fans in the uh, kind of the abstract painting world here. Here's Joe Five, John Zinzer, and uh, this is a very uh, informative show to see how he has progressed from uh, this stuff, which I would say relates to uh, kind of classic abstract expressionism. Uh, 
makes me think of people like uh, maybe Clifford Still. These are actually kind of uh, risky pieces. He's uh, just washing in the background and uh, sort of uh, ripening in these blocks of uh, black and white on top. Oh, geez, here's the artist. <laughs> oh, there's Lydia Dona. There's a nice uh, grouping of uh, three major paintings down here at this end of the wall. And uh, it's nice to see him breaking out and you can start to see that he's uh, a little thicker paint on the canvases and also these kind of black floating lines over the top are a uh, motif that he'll uh, develop a lot more in uh, years to come. Actually makes me think of a uh, a New York artist that's kind of fallen out of uh, favor lately. A guy named David Harrow is uh, one of the first New Yorkers that was uh, involved with the Surrealists. That piece is probably about five by six feet. The back room is where all the great stuff is, so I'll take a look around in here. This is a nice piece. Nice weed with the red. Yeah, no, I think it's coloristically, it's great. James Hyde, what do you think of the work? I think this is an awesome show. Have you been watching his work for a while? Uh, yeah, I remember, I think some of these were maybe in Massimo Audiello's in the, in the 80s. Back in the 80s? Yeah. You've been watching it that long? Well, I've been in New York that long. Back when you were a little baby. Yes, I was, yeah, I, I wasn't even shaving then. <laughs> that look was happening. Why do you think he's an important uh, painter for the New York uh, community? Why well, not? I mean, what's interesting is I think these things look like really fresh at, at this moment, uh, and that's the good thing about painting. If something's good; it just looks very much uh, in the present. And somehow he keeps it going. And he keeps it going. No, that's the that's that's the name of the game, isn't it? Uh, we hope so. <laughs> Thanks, James. I think also uh, this might have been the time that uh, people like Elizabeth Murray were coming on the scene and uh, it's kind of a, I guess what you'd call a funny, wacky version of abstraction. Very nice. And he's got a lot of different uh, surface treatments. Oh, I like that uh, yellow W form. an odd painting. Normally doesn't get uh, as regimented as his uh, striped section here in the back. Nice shot of magenta. I 
think one of the things that I like about his work is that uh, although it is uh, abstract and uh, he's slopping a lot of paint on there, it's, uh, it's like he's worked these all out beforehand, so uh, there's not a lot of hesitation. This is all very direct stuff. Let's see what's happening in the, the back room. I guess uh, maybe in the summer of 2010 and saw an exhibition at the LA Louvre out there and had a lot of this kind of work. This is what people love. Oh, I'm going to take a peek at this. This is a Tell R piece. I guess he's going to be showing here soon. Well, this has been a brief cursory viewing of Jonathan Lasker's early work. Here at Chime and Reed in West Chelsea. Thanks, Kate. Thank you.